IDI is a resource of imaging data, but associated to publication. This is diff slightly different from the BIA, which is uh, sometimes non-publication. So data um, highly curated, so we do not accept everything. So we only ac we accept things that are, if we do not have, for example, a new organism, or if it's a, new, a study that we think is uh, very innovative. So, in the, but we work very closely with the bioimage archive. So that's a kind of the first uh, part to to consider, and it's obviously public access. So we try to apply all we have heard about the fair principle, the fair letter for quite a while. But how does it translate into real solution is what we are aiming to do. And um, as Isabel said earlier on, is there a, a full fair project? And from experience, it's it's a it's a journey. So you are never there. There's always something you can add more and something you can improve as you go along. So those are the kind of just give you a, a quick overview of numbers as it stands. So since its creation in the around six years ago, so it's, it's kind of a steady um, uh, increase in the size of the data we are receiving. But we're, as you can see, there's a large number of gene antibody compound organism. And for that, when we in, ingest the data, we use ontology. So ontology was mentioned. So this is a list of ontology we use. We use a diverse range uh, of a large range of ontology because we have also a large range of data we have human data we have mouse data we have human protein atlas we, we collect a very large range we do not focus on one thing and as much you alluded we do not uh, have uh, clinical data that's unless they become in public domain but it is uh, when they are sensitive we do not uh, host those ones so that this we have been recommended by several journals. So when you have as an author, you sub, you want to publish the bio, the biomage archive has been recommended. An idea also is also recommended. And one thing we we try to do, you can access the data after that with a DOI. So when you submit to IDR, you have a DOI with your paper, but you also have a DOI with your <coughs> data that you submit. So you start to kind of put the pieces uh, of the puzzle together. And you can access those data at any point in time. So IDR is, Omero was mentioned a few times in bioformat. Those are terms that you have heard. So IDR is based on Omero. So it's a, a, a client server application. So here, we that means that in the back end, we will use bioformat. So it's a library that read over 150 file format. We store the metadata into a relational database. We do not store the data in the database. So that's need to be clear. So the data and metadata are two different things. <clears throat> so metadata that we can read at acquisition using bioformat are extracted and stored in a relational database. That should allow us after for visualization, quick access for searching, etc. So since we put a lot of metadata in the system, we've been our search facility was was a bit behind. So I've been working in the past few months uh, actively on a new search system. So that's based on Elasticsearch. So that's allowed us to uh, to to improve the quality of the search. So you have all the metadata we put at whatever level that get indexed and that becomes searchable which means that you can then find much more images, much more relevant images. So that's just an example using a gene symbol, PAC-6, and you have some uh, <clears throat> study about gene on the human brain. So, and that's been released. So if you go to the IDR website, you would be presented and, and can start doing the search um, from a front-end perspective. And I will show you examples where you do from the uh, using the API as well. One thing we encourage uh, earlier on, there was a use case of I'm submitting my data, he, what um, which was great and having the experience from a submitter was very useful. 
But what we also encourage people to submit is not only the imaging data, but also the analytical result, because at time we can do something with them. So this is an example of some the COVID, um, COVID data that were <coughs> submitted now a few years ago. But alongside the imaging data, the author also submitted the analytical result. And we have been able alongside the publication to use that knowledge. So we created a notebook um, in collaboration with the author and we link that to the study that's allow people accessing the data to actually explore what's presented into the into the paper in a very active manner. So in that study, they were uh, uh, testing over 300 compounds, and they come to the conclusion that remdesivir was uh, the best inhibitor in terms of COVID using something called uh, IC50 uh, function to to value to determine that to come to that conclusion so when you link to, you go to that study you can click on the notebook launch a notebook and start running it and reproduce exactly what they they said so in, in the paper it said remdesivir as a, was confirmed in the study as the best like the best compound and actually when you look at the number it's actually what you what you can see from from the Actually, you can make your own mind. That's what I would like to say. And you can plot actively those response. And interestingly, here, as part of the EOS Life, you might have seen this EOS Life logo in the first talk, but you can also now publish your notebook. So now, and get a DOI for that analysis. So you can start to see that you have a DOI for your presentation, for your publication, sorry, a DOI for your data, and also a DOI for the for the analysis performed so you can get credit for all aspects and that be, will become quite important especially what the, in the previous talk when people do ai analysis you can actually while using those data get a doi and start linking all those pieces and potentially do reanalysis of existing public data and associated to uh, because i mentioned there were all, over 300 compound we also have developed uh, a shiny app, so that's written in R, so linked to the data, so people, let's say, can explore and see, make their own mind and build a, this curve in a very dynamic ma manner instead of reading what, say, okay, take face value what's written in the paper. Another, in a, another aspect of having all those metadata stored alongside the data, to make the effort of curating your data, you can start asking, question and that's in the spirit of what Beatrice was mentioning you have all those public uh, resources they have been annotated they have, it's uh, a tremendous amount of knowledge so how can we use those resources and link them to other resources as um, as mentioned earlier in the talk there's plenty of there's Infra Frontier there's Alexia there's plenty of the re those resources so we have started to look at how we can link some of those resources to, in our case, IDR, but that could be done to other uh, repository. So we came to that question, which diabetes-related genes are expressed in the pancreas? So we looked at the resource called Human Mind, which is an, an integrated database of homo sapiens genomic data. So using the API, we asked the question, you put which tissue you're interested in, pancreas, which disease you're interested in, diabetes, and that come with a list of genes. So with that list of genes, we, we focus on one gene, which is the PDX1, and that give us, by focusing on PDX1 using the, the IDR API, we can extract and find relevant images that show us a different development stage within that gene. So you can, and that only come because all those, um, at the time of submission, the author took the time with the curator to annotate all, all the data you have. So you can see the reproducibility, not repro the reuse, not re reproducibility, reuse of the data. And I, I, oops, IDEA hosts the human protein at, uh, data from the human protein atlas, so you can browse them, view them, so which is an interesting element. And as you can see, 
on the right hand side, you we link the you have antibody and fire, you can link them to the ontological term. So if you I encourage you to visit and if you click oh, where's my mouse cursor here oh, i've lost it uh, so if you click on this link you will uh, it will direct you to the to the relevant uh, resource but interestingly when we ask because of the new search we are able to ask ourselves the same question can i give me the number of gene uh, the number of images sorry associated to that pdx1 with abnormal pathology status so you can start to do much more uh, with those resources because you ask yourself general biological question can I find data that are relevant for me that I could I should focus on and in that case you you can you can see if you're looking for a, a specific term and then you can apply afterwards your AI model of doing some doing f further investigation so this kind of idea can be can be used in in a term so if you're interested to submit to idr i think the best is to contact us via email because depending of the what will be the step how to submit the data how to also upload the original data raw file image and also fill the metadata because the curation uh, part is an, imp an important aspect if you need to submit all the gene, the compound, and or whatever. We also take, as I said, analytical result. If you have, um, we have plenty of example with uh, segmented images, but also also the script because that's one thing we tend to struggle. Uh, am I missing the, that's one thing we try to encourage author to also submit. If you have used a software or a plugin or a script please submit that because we actually can do something with it we have other example where we have um, people who are doing lineage they use uh, fiji and then they submit the result we can actually reproduce and we can create environment where people are not going to do a full reanalysis but they can actually explore the data a bit more by providing them the the ability to Get a bit closer to the data from a programmatic point of view. So, basically, as a summary, ADR is it's a curated data. You can search via, um, as I said, now an improved search um, system. So you can do search via the web interface, but also via its API, and we can uh, do some reanalysis and deploy that alongside the images. So we're obviously grateful to our founders and to the team. I would like to thank the EBI team because we EBI host the we run IDR and do all the curation, but all the where the data set it's thanks to EBI, and also they have put in place a number of uh, just a Matthews team have put in place uh, an environment where we can run those Jupyter uh, notebook alongside the data. So the data transfer is limited. But you can, if people are aware, of, want to use them in Google Colab or Binder themselves outside of IDR, they also uh, worked. Mm -hmm.